Here's a quick look at some simulation inside Onshape. I have an assembly here and of course having an assembly uh, is pretty much all you need um, to get going and simulating in Onshape. Um, materials are defined as they always are in the part studio in Onshape. And the assembly all along has had a very physical um, type of definition. Uh, this is the benefit of the way that Onshape uses its assembly mates. So if I suppress this one, uh, you'll see that I can move the assembly um, according to this mate here, which is actually a cylindrical mate. Um, so a cylindrical mate allows it to rotate as well as translate, uh, rotate around the in the y-axis in this case, and the it'll um, also translate in that direction as well. So if I bring this one back to life here, uh, which is a revolute. Now, importantly, by using real life uh, physical joints like revolutes and ball and slider and, and, and cylindrical, uh, we are much less prone to over constraining models, uh, which we can have a look in a, in a minute and at the effect of that. So I've got this assembly. Um, really, the only thing I need to do is to create a force. Uh, on it. So a force uh, or a, a moment or a bearing uh, or a pressure or an acceleration uh, pretty simple engineering concepts and really the only visual manifestation that anything is different and uh, we are in the assembly module. So to put it another way, if you know Onshape then you know sim on shape simulation because um, it, it's all there. So we've got a force on this part in the, the upward direction uh, I'm, I'm modding, um, loading this whole body. Um, we use again a very abstract free. <laughs> we try and avoid abstractions uh, as much as possible to keep things very, very physical. Um, that's all we need. Uh, so we then we just hit the show results uh, button up here, and immediately uh, this is a cloud native service like anything else in Onshape. Um, there's nothing running locally here. Uh, I happen to be on a Mac. Uh, it could be on a Chromebook, it could be on a Linux, anything. Uh, it makes no difference to me. Um, I can already start animating the results um, and, and really getting a sense for you know, how this thing's moved. So the maximum displacement here is 0.3 millimeters. Uh, that seems fair enough. Uh, of course, you do a, a check early on. Um, uh, but really, you know, interactive time simulation is what we're aiming for. Um, you want to get decision support as you're building while you're in the train of thought uh, rather than waiting for things to queue up and, and for resources to be on free or anything like that. Um, so interestingly here if I look from the top you see there's quite a bit of uh, movement or deform deformation and displacement in this uh, y direction. Uh, imagine if we had put a fixed, uh, in the worst case if we put a fixed mate or just a fixed constraint um, how much over constraint that would have been. Uh, there's a lot of asymmetry in this model uh, deliberately for this reason. Uh, we can run our mouse over and, and you know get an approximate of the, the hotspots here. Um, you know maybe this one is is a little bit of a concern. We're getting close to 120 um, here. So maybe it's time to call a friend and see what we can do about it. And let's do that by um, by going behind the scenes. I'm going to reveal what's behind the curtain here and there's another browser. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many browsers you get, it's just, a, it's just another one. And in this window here I'm actually following a different user who happens to also be called uh, Greg Brown. Um, that's complete coincidence. So I'm on a, on, I'm on a different window um, and I'm manipulating this model and all I'm doing in this browser is following them. So a follow mode uh, is hands off the keyboard, hands off the mo mouse, just follow them along and see what they're doing or perhaps be involved with a slack discussion or a huddle saying I'm concerned about the stress in the front or that left hole, do you think we can do anything about it? So you'll see that as Greg Brown number two goes over and starts editing features you can see those, you can see me uh, in that um, live and as I change some of this geometry live 
uh, maybe two millimeters might be, oh yeah, two millimeters, let's try that. So as soon as I commit that, you'll notice that the simulation, which was happily just animating there on the left side of the screen, um, automatically decided it needed to refresh because the part which is it's referencing uh, was updated. So this kind of, this is, I don't know, I'll say unheard of, uh, unprecedented would be probably a better word. Um, level of real-time collaborative simulation. You know, we're going beyond just part modeling here. We're actually going into um, some incredible areas of, for simulation uh, that really the Onshape platform, uh, you know, the power and the flexibility and the capabilities of the Onshape platform are really the only ones that, that can provide this, uh, this level here. So job done. Uh, we've reduced the stress uh, to around 70 now, 71, 72. Um, you know, we could go further into this with more detailed analysis, but the point of Onshape Simulation is about getting instant um, and interactive decision support uh, and utilizing your teammates um, as much as anything else because you know they might be the ones with the domain knowledge um, whether it's going to be some kind of manufacturing issue or, or some other issue uh, that will affect the, the shapes which we're trying to simulate here. You want to involve and collaborate with people all the way along.